Hello beautiful people, welcome back to another episode of Morocco. I hope you are all doing fantastic. If you are new to my channel, please consider subscribing. In today's video, I am going to document my entire day trip. It's important to note that my video original, organic and not scripted. Authenticity highly valued in content creation, which is why I don't use any artificial intelligence tools or apps to perfect my accent. Alright, so let me take you to Aid bin Haddu. Aid bin Haddu is not located directly in the Sahara Desert, but on the fringes of the desert in the southern part of the Morocco. Or it can be called the pre-Sahara or the southern foothill of Atlas Mountain. Three hours and a half each direction, the place called Aid bin Haddu. Moroccan people are multilingual and can speak several languages, including Arabic, Dorisia, Berber, French, Spanish, and English. If you are traveling in a small group like I am with a small group today, about 10 people, some are from Holland, France, UK, Italy and Spain. So it is important to choose a tour guide or a group that speak your language uh, so you can understand what they are saying. Sometimes tour guide is important when searching for information in a Google may not provide all the details and answers. Some secrets are known probably only by the local guides. So sometimes it is recommended to hire a tour guide so they can navigate you in and out. Imagine the situation 25 people taking a 10 minutes break and going inside this restaurant to buy coffee or snacks and there is only one cashier. What do you think? We stop here for 10 minutes. Maybe go to the toilet, some coffee. I have not eaten breakfast because I wake up early morning. They pick me up at six o'clock and there's a guy, he just cut the line in front of me and I say, you know what, forget it. He's traveling in my same van. <laughs> People have no sometime consideration, you know? So I didn't buy any coffee or anything. I'll be away for the next uh, stop and see if I can get something to eat. This is Tiji and Tishka, a mountain pass named by the Berber people and one of the most famous high mountain passes in Morocco. This mountain pass connects the city of Marrakesh in the west of the city of Urzaza, also the gateway to the Sahara Desert. Tiji and Tishka Pass reaches an elevation of approximately 2260 meters which is equivalent of approximate 7,415 feet above the sea level. We are about to go another 2,700 meters high. We arrived and walking towards to the Ayd bin Abdu. Ayd bin Abdu. Ayd bin Abdu. I'm sorry, Ayd bin Abdu. We're gonna have a one hour and a half with the tour guide. 
It was about three hours and a half drive from Marrakesh of Aid bin Haddu, which is four or five hundred years old village. When you come here, you can come in two different uh, way. Your tour guide could be with you or you can have a tour guide here. Our situation was we have to get the tour guide here and the whole group pay only three euros each person, which is approximately 33 dirham per person, which is not bad. This is Kassar Ayd bin Haddu. Kassar is the North African Arabic name for a castle or fortified village. Keep in mind that Ayd bin Haddu is UNESCO World Heritage Site. So how this place Ayd bin Haddu awarded with UNESCO World Heritage Site? It goes through a rigorous valuation and nomination process. The process of evaluating UNESCO World Heritage Site is complex and comprehensive. The committee look at several factors to determine whether a site is culturally, historically, or naturally significant. Before a word is given, the committee assesses the site's authenticity and integrity. This is our tour guide today, and he has a tour group today. Uh, one for the French speakers and one for English. Without school, without uh, Islam, without religion, living just in the mountains, uh, uh, different life. But no more, uh, more free people in Morocco, the, the, the Bedouins living in the road of Sahara, they're living Bedouins. The Bedouins, it's a... Uh, and the gladiator, do you know gladiator? Shoot here, but in December now, uh, the second part of Gladiator, because the uh, director of Gladiator is here in Morocco, uh, Ridley Scott. It's here in Morocco, but uh, not here, in words of that city. After lunch, you have more 45 minutes there, you can see there the studio of the cinema. Okay. And we are here in the bridge and the river. Kassar Ayd bin Haddu is believed to be over a millennium old, meaning it contains over a thousand years of history. This is the spot of movie Gladiator, the Roman Colosseum, where Russell Crowe had a fight scene. Uh, if you've seen the movie, so you know what I'm talking about. 
after the shooting movie is done the prop set was taken down which is why the arena is not there anymore now look at that on the top of the hill that was the movie set where the Lawrence of Arabia was filmed and the starting was Peter O'Toole That method, that was a message between Barber and Jewish people. Here used to be Lee Barber and Jewish people together. Barber flag had yellow, green, and blue. Blue means the sky, and the green means the field. The yellow means Sahara, which is desert. So this mud house, five years lifetime. You see here is a straw. There's this straw. They mix it up with the mud to keep it compact. However, sometimes the rain and the weather condition, uh, this mud can be washed away. So when they start showing the inside bamboo, that's the time need to repair. So again, lifetime is about five years of this building and this method is actually using since 2000 years BC before Christ probably more so maintaining of this village is a pretty daunting You know when you have a great shot for the camera that you are ready to take the shot and somebody just come in front of you they just block the shot so if you see somebody taking a video don't come in front of it it's a disrespectful let the person take the video or the photo wait for your turns that's my advice I think I'm done here now I'm kind of hungry as well but you know what let's go down to the river and enjoy the beautiful view before grabbing some delicious Moroccan food. What I'm trying to do, walk towards to the river not safe way to go but okay usually when you come with the tour guide they take the bridge and going in there and then you come back the same route okay i'm here i'm, I'm actually walking on the dry river also known as this with onila river it is a seasonal river that flows through the high atlas mountain it has played crucial role in the livelihood of these communities. 
providing water for agriculture and other needs whenever it flows. They can flood it in this whole river up to three to four meter high. So that's pretty deep. And that's why they build that bridge. So this is the older part, you know, four or 500 years old city, this part. And this part in the back here is a newer city. This city, nobody lives here because there's no electricity. Only business, selling souvenir or masjid, which is mosque, pray only during the daytime. And the evening they go back to this city, which is modern. Uh, it has more electricity and water supply and everything. This is amazing. Imagine three, four hundred years ago how people live here. Even nowadays, coming in this point is difficult. You have to pass through road and highway because now modern days we have those road and highway. On that time, on the 17th century, no, it was difficult. Only camel and very hard way to come here. How people made this city to living here. The Jews and the barber, they used to live here. You know, the Jewish people in Morocco, it's a very big time. A lot of Jewish moved to Israel, but many Jewish didn't want to move to Israel. They stay here, remain here, and they're still in here, and they're doing a business. And so normal, they're living with the Muslims. Uh, you know, Jews and Muslims, they're basically like a cousin. Okay, I'm looking for uh, a decent place to eat. This restaurant advertisement that feature a chef with a rat. It seems like they may have taken inspiration from a cartoon or story, um, although I can't quite recall which one. Regardless, my main concern is that most restaurants try to get rid of rats, right? Yet, this restaurant seems to be proud of having one. This doesn't really set well with me. And I don't think I will be dining here. Perhaps my sense of humor is low, but I just don't find it funny. I ordered some couscous with chicken. And... Uh, Couscous in Morocco is basically like rice. Like in Asian people, they eat rice every day. Morocco couscous. This is a touristic area. So basically, they try to make it quick food. I like to go something special place and eat something that all Moroccan dish is available. All right, so I'm waiting for the couscous. Lentil in here. Let's try it. Mm. Vegetable, vegetable soup. We cut it in the middle like this. It has no any flavor. I'm going to put some pepper. It barely can come out anything. And some salt. little better when you are going to a place full of tourists there's no local people eating in that restaurant there's a few things happen price is higher service not going to be great because they cook like uh, in a batch a lot of it so there is no heart and good feelings to make it a special meal for you it's for everybody so they have to cook quantity so when they cook quantity they lost basically the speciality so that is exactly happened well i'm not complaining but i'm just saying that this is exactly happened any tourist place you go example you go to disneyland or universal studio what kind of food you see not great not good taste but it's expensive too right any restaurant even is tourist area they should make it something good good quality so people are gonna love it because they know 
you come here for one time as a tourist and then you're not going to come back so there's no they don't care about the reputation it's not like you keep coming the same customer all the time then problem then have a reputation issue but here you are a tourist you come once in a lifetime maybe twice and you have this food you go goodbye they never see you again so they don't care about the reputation or the taste so everything is a business so this is couscous it's good so this is chicken couscous lots of vegetable and one piece of small chicken on the top that's all business here <laughs> So my bill is 145 dirham which is approximately $14.50. So that was a chicken couscous, one bottle of water which is a 15 dirham, $1.50, $10, I mean 10 dirham they charge me for the credit card use and so $145. If you like my video give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Shukran means in Arabic thank you. I'll see you in my next video.